Well, good afternoon, friends. Mark Holmes here. And as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. It is Taco Tuesday, and I hope all your taco dreams come true. And I actually have some news that actually looks really good because I've had some people. Um, l- listen, we're up to almost 80 people that are going on our tailgate. <clears throat> I haven't sent out the tickets just yet. I'm still working on all that, still collecting all those uh the next day or so we'll end up getting all those out but we actually have really good news because i remember somebody had said man they're calling for rain on sunday and i've been looking at the long range forecast but what i try and tell you is if you don't like the weather in washington dc just wait 24 hours because it's going to change yesterday it was 70 degrees in washington dc today it's about 40 and cold it was windy as hell last night kind of like it was in new england and today they're actually putting down the brine on the streets uh, because they're actually calling for some snow. But then on Saturday, it's going to be rainy and like 76 degrees. It's crazy. But what they have had in the long range forecast, and we've been watching it and stuff, was rain Saturday and Sunday. Okay. Now, today, just in the last hour, the forecast actually has partly sunny. Although it's only going to be 48 degrees, but I'll take 48 degrees and no rain any day. So it's looking now like the rain's going to move in on Friday and Saturday and be out Saturday. So that's good news for those that are going to the game. And we're going to, we're going to be taking over section 326 because we've got like seats in the second, the third, the fifth. I mean, literally, it's, it's it, we're, all together. Joe Boo Sports is taking over FedEx Field. And uh, I talked to my man, Jet D. He's going to be uh, getting started doing some briskets. And he's going to be doing the pulled pork for me as well. And I got my man, David Wiley, the chef, who's going to be helping uh, get all this stuff together. We're going to have a ball. We're going to eat. And hopefully, we'll get a victory. Now, today's one of those days. I, I didn't know this. I, I, I did not know this till my friend Law Nation let me know that Bad Dog killed me. He literally killed me on his channel. Dallas Cowboy fans have lost their mind. I want to play you a little bit of this and w- what his beef is about me, where basically he's just saying, you're a freaking idiot. Okay, I mean, he, he literally is just saying... You, you've lost your mind. You're stupid as hell. You don't know shit. Okay, let, 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 let's listen to Bad Dog. Now, understand, Bad Dog is a little hangry these days because his team is bad. I mean, really bad. I mean, I, I think I'd probably be upset too. I mean, when you think of you know them drafting Daniel Jones, you know Danny Dimes, who ends up being more like Danny Dollar Store. You know, when you have a receiver that has an iconic catch like Odell Beckham, and it's in a loss. You draft players like, you know, Eric Flowers to be an offensive lineman, and he's a bust. You think that you get, you know, a a bellwether back in Barkley, and yet, for some reason, he ends up being a, a guy who can't stay on the field. And, you know, it just seems like mistake after mistake after mistake uh, that they keep having. And, you know, I can understand why he is so mad. You know, in fact, even in free agency, they keep messing up. What? Why do we get a wide receiver? Why do we get a wide receiver? Why do we get a wide receiver? Yeah, I can understand the anger that they have. So let's get on to my buddy Bad Dog. There are just blatantly stupid things being put out there. I'm sorry, I got to speak on it. Now, the New York Giants have not been good in years. We know that. And the Dallas Cowboys are a pretty good team. They're not a Super Bowl contending team, but they're, they're pretty good. They're pretty good, especially in this division. This division ain't any good still. Dallas is the one team okay. above 500. We didn't have one of them last year. But they're pretty good teams. Cowboy fans Stupid feel themselves things. a lot, and I've said this before. Cowboy fans, when they're doing well, they're all on the you know bandwagon, and when they're when they're failing, they all disappear. I've seen that for years. Not me on YouTube. Years. You know, not me. I'm always. And here. I know that sometimes the Philadelphia Eagle fan base, oh, they get a little, they get a little crazy too. They get a little delusional. 
You know, we got some Giants fans. Delusion runs in every fan base. Cockroaches. Every one of them. But these cluster of videos by Mark Holmes. <laughs> Bro, stop. No, I'm not going to stop. I know Mark Holmes has a little man crush on Dak Prescott. I get that. Everything's Dak Prescott. Man trust crush. me, when we play the Cowboys, oh, I got a video for Mark Holmes. Trust me when I tell you. I got I got a video for Mark Holmes. You think what I did to Philly 500 was funny? Wait till you see and, this. And I got an ass kicking for you. Fine. <laughs> On Dak Prescott. <clears throat> mm-hmm. I, I don't care. Go on. Mention it. Go whatever. on. He thinks Dak Prescott's the second coming of Jesus. It's not the case, but that's what he thinks. Whatever. But when I am sitting here watching videos of this guy <laughs> saying Micah Parsons is Lawrence Taylor, that's where I draw the line. Micah Parsons has been awesome. I wanted the Giants to draft Micah Parsons. <laughs> I did y'all video too on stupid. how much Micah Parsons would help. I said Micah Parsons would be a game changer. He is. He's great. Mm-hmm. He's played 11 games. And you're going to compare 12. him and say he's equal to one of the greatest, not just the greatest defensive player in the history of the league, one of the greatest players in the history of the NFL. That is asinine. You're better than that, sir. You're better than that. <laughs> no, I not. understand no, bias and, and, and homerism and just blind <laughs> love for your team. But when you're as old as Mark Holmes, who's older than me, and I'm older than dirt, and you're trying to even mention this guy in the same sentence with Lawrence Taylor after 11 games, it is utterly ridiculous. I don't care how many sacks Micah Parsons has compared to what Lawrence Taylor had his rookie year. Do you understand that quarterbacks throw the ball way more Good than point. he did back in Good the day? Point. Do you Good understand point. that? Do you Good understand point. how much the game has changed? Do you understand offenses had to change the yeah. way they blocked because of Lawrence Taylor? Lawrence Taylor single-handedly changed the way the game was played. Great point. The guy invented the strip sack. All these guys mm-hmm. in strip sack, now you can thank Lawrence Taylor for that. Lawrence Taylor covered wide receivers. Lawrence Taylor ran down running backs from across the field. Lawrence Taylor was mm-hmm. the greatest player in the history of defense in the agree. NFL. Agree. I agree completely. And I've seen Philly 500 stand up for once. Philly 500 hates the Giants. He's an Eagles fan. He knows. And anybody that's being honest with themselves knows how great Lawrence Taylor was, especially if you're our age and you were old enough to see him play. Stats don't tell the whole story, sir. Sir. Go on. Like a person. Finish reading me great. out. And I'm not taking anything away from the rookie season he's had at all. That's not what I'm here to do. I'm not bashing Micah Parsons. But to, 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 to compare this guy after 11 games 12. to Lawrence Taylor, that's just stupid. I'm sorry. You can't compare a guy after 11 games. People are trying to talk about J.J. Watt, J.J. Watt. J.J. Watt's better than Lawrence Taylor. J.J. Watt. What happened to J.J. Watt after the first five years of his career? <laughs> right down the toilet. Okay. So you're going to sit here t- trying to tell me that this guy hasn't even played a full season in the NFL and you're comparing him to Lawrence Taylor. Let me tell you, knock it <laughs> off. Knock it off. Which, That's just, I'm sorry. That's hold, just hold not, on, it's hold on, not bad, intelligent. Bad Doug. Look, look, I, I got and something again, for you, Bad Doug. Hold on. And you're making these kids believe these, these kids that are 25, 30, that never saw Lawrence Taylor play. And you're really trying to make them believe what you That is just, a, it's a fountain of misinformation, sir. And, and as a New York Giants fan, it's gonna, that irritates me. I'm sorry. As anybody, as a football fan, that should irritate anybody. And I'm sure that re- the true that, Dallas Cowboy fans that have rolled with Dallas real. since back in the day that aren't blind homers and don't always wear the star-colored glasses. <laughs> oh, Dak Prescott, uh, Joe Montana, and Pat Mahomes, and Tom Brady combined. I, I, I get it. <laughs> okay. The guy years ago tell me, oh, Randy Gregory is going to be a Hall of Famer. Randy oh, Gregory is a Hall of Famer. Shit. Yeah, Randy Gregory got, got what, like 15 and a half sacks in his entire oh, career? Oh, boy. You know, Leonard Marshall had 15 and a half sacks in 1985 alone. Leonard Marshall, mo- most underrated giant of all time, by the way. Randy Gregory, man, he's going to be great. Oh, every <laughs> cowboy is going to be great. Oh, Michael my- Parsons is Lawrence Taylor. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, so bad dog. I, I think you're hangry. Here, I got a Snickers for you. <laughs> it's a giant size Snickers because you're hangry. I can understand it, dog. I can understand that you're mad because having all of the things that are happening to your team that aren't good, you know, you, you, you don't want to give up 
Lawrence Taylor. And, and believe me, see, th- this is where, did you actually watch the video? First of all, I said the highest compliment I can give Micah Parsons is he's a lot like Lawrence Taylor. Now, let's be clear. I was talking about their rookie season, just the rookie season, because I want to compare apples to apples. There's no way I can compare one of the greatest players in the history of football, their career in totality, and say that it's the same as Micah Parsons. But what I can do is I can compare what they did as rookies. And like I said, at, at the point when I first started talking about this, I said Lawrence Taylor was the only rookie to ever win Defensive Player of the Year. Only one. And when you say that you're old enough to remember, son, let, let me explain how old I am. Because it's not me going by statistics, because at the time when he was a rookie, the only statistic that they carried was his sacks. They didn't have the pressures. They didn't have the tackles, tackles for losses, the hurries, and the quarterback knock. They didn't have any of those statistics. What I had to see was my eyes. And I'm old enough to remember Lawrence Taylor becoming the number 56 because he wanted to be like Dallas Cowboys linebacker Hollywood Henderson. And I watched him too. I saw some of the best players in football from the mean Joe Greens to the Deacon Joneses to, of course, my man, Randy White and Ed Too Tall Jones. I saw all of this myself. Now, I can tell you right now what I'm looking at from Micah Parsons for this year. There's no guarantee that he's going to do anything after this year. We saw crazy shit from RG3 that happened, and he was rookie of the year and then went down the toilet. We saw Chase Young doing great things last year and got fat and happy off of what he did and spent all his time doing commercials and believing the hype that he had to just show up. So it'll be behoovent of Micah Parsons to stay hungry and continue to work his craft to try to become that Hall of Famer like Lawrence Taylor. But what I can say is, and because let, let me come through with this, because now there's one guy who's only who who has a rookie that has been Defensive Player of the Year. And when you start seeing how many times he's been Defensive Player of the Week or Defensive Player of the Month, you know, not just rookie, you see him doing things that aren't rookie-esque. Now, I, I, I hear you saying what you're saying, and I appreciate that. But what you said, do you understand what Lawrence Taylor did Teams had to game plan against him. He changed the way you played football. He invented the strip sack. Not disputing any of that. But here's the thing. When you get a guy, okay, a guy, I want you to understand, in the last five games alone, seven and a half sacks. Seven and a half. As a rookie who's only a part-time edge rusher, He is leading the league in tackles for loss. He is one of the highest in pressures. He's in the top 10 in sacks. And as you say, a game changer, because he is a game changer. He's not at six foot three, 245 pounds, a typical defensive end or pass rusher. He's a little bit smaller. He's a little bit smaller, you know, light, light in the ass. But he's not only an edge rusher because he can literally come from anywhere. You don't think that a quarterback, let's say hypothetically, because what he's been doing has been doing it without having the Randy Gregory's and the Demarcus Lawrence's out there, without having a great defensive front. He is the guy that they say, we got to stop, but yet they can't stop him. If you are now a quarterback, let's just say hypothetically we do get Randy Gregory back and we get Demarcus Lawrence and they play reasonably well and start taking some of that focus off where now they have to worry about putting uh, the tight end maybe to help block or the running back. If you see Micah Parsons in the A-gap, 
You don't think that that changes everything for that quarterback right there, that he literally shits his pants? You don't think that from here on out, teams say, we have to stop that guy. You don't think that when he's in that A-gap, they're thinking about, we got to get the protection to stop him in the middle, and then he goes off in coverage. Because here's the thing, when you say changing the game, he is making game-changing plays, not only as a pass rusher, not to mention the forced fumbles. He's got two of those, the pressures, the quarterback hits, the knockdowns. He also can go in coverage. And if you watch the New Orleans Saints game, his pass defense where he knocked the ball up led to an interception in the red zone. That's game-changing ability. Because here's the thing. There hasn't been a player like this. In fact, this may be the prototype for the future. A guy who's kind of a tweener. Because that's what he really is right now. He's an edge rusher. He's a linebacker. I can cover people. And I can make the quarterback shit his pants. I can bull rush you even though I'm only 245 pounds because he's done that. He has literally taken the tackles and pushed him in the quarterback. Or he can use his speed and get around the outside, around the outside. So I'm not saying put him in the Hall of Fame. I'm not saying put him in the Hall of Fame. I am comparing him to what Lawrence Taylor was. And FYI, again, I I agree with you. They didn't pass as much in the 80s as they do today. But when you get a guy who's able to do the things that he's doing, basically, there's what position on the field can he not play? Let me ask you that. What position on the field can he not play? This is something that you have not ever seen before. And so that's why I look at Lawrence Taylor being, like you said, the guy who invented the strip sack, the guy who teams then had to game plan against, the guy who became a Hall of Famer. I'm not ready to say that he is going to be that guy in the Hall of Fame. But what I can say is what he's done in this part 10 sacks in 12 games. I don't care who you are. 10 sacks in 12 games is some damn good eating. And as I look here, I, I, this video is getting a little bit long, and I don't want to be too long-winded. But I want you to look at something here because here's where we are right now. Micah Parsons as a rookie. These are all the rookie sack numbers. Keep in mind, he's only had 12 games, not 11, 12 games. He sits right here. If he just gets one more sack in the next five games, that vaults him up here with Vernon Maxwell, uh, Keith Millard, Darren Howard, um, Brian Arakbo, and those guys. And FYI, you don't see Lawrence Taylor on this list because he only had nine and a half. If he gets two sacks, that will pass Von Miller, Peter Boulware, and crew. And that will get him up there with my buddy, Charles Haley, Julius Peppers, Terrell Suggs, Mark Anderson, and Bradley Chubb. If he gets just three sacks in the next five games, that will put him up there with Reggie White and Dwight Freeney. And if we get him... Four, he's only behind Javon Kurse at 14 and a half. And when I look at the numbers, see, here's what you have to understand that I'm saying is to have 10 sacks and 54 solo tackles, 16 tackles for loss, 25 quarterback hits, two forced fumbles, four pass defenses, and let me me make sure I get the – uh, 12 hurries, 15 quarterback knockdown, 
and 38 pressures. Bad dog? Take the Snickers and go home. Take the Snickers and go home. Because, bro, he's still got five games left to go. And um, I have to put him up there when I compare rookie year to rookie year. We'll find out in another 10, 12 years if he is body of work, Lawrence Taylor. But if we take the first year and the first year, we're right there. And FYI, one other thing too, Bad Dog, because I, I know you think that I've never seen Lawrence Taylor play, and I have seen Lawrence Taylor because, you know, we've got to go out there like a bunch of crazed dogs, you know. Lawrence Taylor didn't get to double-digit sacks until his fourth season. Okay. Now, be cool, bad dog. Be cool. I know your team. Well, it's on the scrap heap.